From the very start, she, she'd come and sit by me. I thought she liked me. You know, I was kind of hoping she liked me. They met while riding the senior center bus on Vashon Island. When you think of Eileen, what comes to mind? Her kisses. She, she had the most beautiful kisses I've ever experienced. 75-year-old Eileen Carlson left the home she shared with Lawrence Dean on Vashon on a clear Saturday morning last November for a quick walk. She had just left, just left because she was going to pick up some salad at, at IGA. It was in the intersection, marked with a senior center warning sign, that a truck hit Eileen in the middle of the crosswalk. At the hospital the next day, Lawrence shared his last kiss. When I pressed the button, I came in and took her off life support. I asked if I could kiss her, and they said, sure. <laughs> Eileen Carlson's death is an example of a confounding consequence of the coronavirus pandemic. A higher number of deaths on Washington roads, even though there are fewer vehicles out there. When you see a drop in traffic, generally you'll see a drop in the number of fatal and serious crashes as well. But John Milton of the Washington Department of Transportation said that hasn't happened. He says there were fewer cars on the road and fewer crashes, down as much as 55% per month in 2020 when compared to 2019, the year before the pandemic. But here's the thing. Fatality and serious injury crashes are actually going up. Traffic fatalities peaked at 61% higher in August of last year compared to August of 2019. In all, there were 313 incidents that month statewide that resulted in either serious injuries or death. That's because more accidents involve cars hitting walkers or bikers out there, according to Milton, WashDOT's safety engineer who analyzes crash data. The difference really what we are seeing is an increase in the more severe type crashes, so the serious injuries and the fatalities. Milton just released this report that says extreme speeding in urban areas is one reason. In these particular cases, I was seeing 80, 90, 100 mile an hour crashes that were on facilities that certainly weren't designed that way. He says drivers tend to go faster when roads are more open, as they have been because of decreased traffic during the pandemic. So my takeaway from it was as traffic released and there was more space on the road, people were taking that up with increasing their speeds. Those cars are speeding as many more of us escape the lockdown by walking or biking around our neighborhoods. The Washington State Department of Transportation counted 51% more people out walking during the pandemic compared to the prior year and 54% more people using pedal power, their bicycles to get around. In the crash that killed Eileen Carlson, the driver wasn't impaired or speeding. Deputies cited the driver for failure to yield to a pedestrian, according to the King County Sheriff's Department. That is what we see, um, that just that inattention, inattention rather and lack of presence can contribute, even when we have the best of circumstances around us, to a car pedestrian collision. Authorities say that being cautious and paying attention still matters, even though emptier roads may look safer. Oh, God. I just don't know how to handle it. This grief is just overwhelming to me. To see someone suffering like that, that alone should be reason enough to convince you to slow down and drive safer out here. There's one other thing I want to point out, that WashDOT is looking for your comments on this issue. The department is collecting public comments on a new active transportation plan. Active transportation, that's what it calls walkers and bikers. It's trying to improve the statewide network of bike and walking routes. Text the word traffic to the number you see on your screen here, 206-448-4545 and we'll send you the link with all the details. So Chris, it's so sad what happened to Eileen. You talked about drivers, but what about pedestrians and bikers, Chris? Aren't they sometimes at fault in these crashes? Yeah, you know, a couple of police agencies have told me just that, Mark. In fact, just in Linwood, just three days ago, there was a woman who was hit uh, crossing 99, this busy street just further north. Uh, she was hit and seriously injured, critically injured, and she was just 30 feet away from the crosswalk, but she wasn't in it. That's just a bad move. Chris Ingalls, thank you.